Welcome back this week for Flow for Life. Today, I got a special guest named Brandon Gates. He is a real estate agent and one of the hosts on the Pull Up Experience podcast. Uh, can you tell the people a little bit more about yourself? What's going on? Good morning, everybody. My name is Brandon Gates. Uh, you can you, Some people know me as not your average agent. Um, I do a plethora of things now, but I like to keep it low key. <laughs> um, I also have a nonprofit called Legacy Starts where we're educating um millennials and generation z on the importance of credit business and real estate and um and just my whole biggest thing is just not being a typical agent i'm more, i feel like i'm more a teacher than, than the agent nowadays because i'm showing people the way of how to basically increase their wealth you know what i'm saying in high school and in college they don't teach us how to do it you know what I'm saying so i feel like it's our responsibility to make sure that we, we we teach each other so that's pretty much what i'm on nowadays yeah, that's good, man. And honestly, man, that's like the number one thing out here is like financial literacy and stuff right. like that. Like that's the stuff that people don't teach. Like I am a college student as well. I just got out the army like last year. But I, I appreciate it. I always understood the importance of financial literacy. And then it's like I'm in school and it's like they don't teach that, but I'm mm -hmm. on the outside learning it every day. And I'm like, it don't even add up. Right. They don't add up at all. The stuff I'm learning, I feel like nothing I'm learning in school, mind you, the military is paying for it, but nothing that I learn in school can translate to civilian life in a mm -hmm. realistic way. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you, you, you know that, that that's on purpose though. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, they do that on by purpose, design. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's by design. Right, exactly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you grew up in Cleveland, Ohio? Yes, sir. I grew up on, I actually grew up all parts of Cleveland. We moved around a lot, but I can say uh, a majority of my life was spent on 140 for miles, my friend. Okay, so what high school you went to? Uh, for all the, all the people who don't know about Max Hayes, it's a vocational school on the west side. Uh, I got a lot of trouble when I, when I went to South. And my mom said, you know what, on some first visit Bel Air, you're going to take your, your butt on to, uh, to the west side and learn, and learn, and learn an actual skill. What skill did you learn? Uh, bit of construction. Wow, so that I bet you use some of that experience that you learned into the real estate, not knowing that that's probably why you learned it. No facts, like, like it's, it's funny because my uh, my best friend, he's a contractor and uh, we do some work together or whatever. And he'd be like, dang, did you know he's gonna do this when you got older? Not at all, <laughs> not at all. That's like manifestation with like, but a surprise at the same time. Like no, that's a fact, that's a fact. Yeah, so I was reading your bio on your Instagram and you was talking about that you wanted to create a hundred homeowners and investors in Cleveland, Ohio. So mm -hmm. why did that become a goal of yours? So I'm, gl I'm glad you asked that. So I don't know if uh, your, your, your audience ever read the 10X Rule by Grant Cardone, but it's a dope book, man. Uh, I love the book the uh, because the premise of the whole book is that if you aim for 10 million, you'll land on a million just by default. You know what I'm saying? Because you're aiming for it, the efforts and the and the and the planning and everything you put towards, you're going by the fault, fault on, you know what I'm saying, a million. So my thing is this, if I aim for a hundred, I'm at least gonna hit 50, you know, and uh anybody comes with once again being strategic about how you're going about it. And the side, not the side part, but the real thing about it, I think I'm gonna hit that. I'm already in March. Mm -hmm. I've already hit about maybe 10. And like, I don't want anybody to think that that's an easy feat because it's not, you know what I'm saying? Getting somebody, helping them with their credit, helping them get pre-approved, actually finding the house in the market that we're in, that's, these are not easy feats, you know? Mm. Um, but, you know, like I said, what, what, what I have in place, the funds I have in place, the, the great team I have, like, I really believe I'm gonna be able to hit that goal before the end of, tw of December, 2022. Yeah, and man, that's dope. That's yeah. real dope, man. And, I guess like growing up in Cleveland, Ohio, like most people don't really consider buying houses. Like at least the people I know, like that's not a goal. It's like, I'm a rent, 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 yes. rent, rent. Like, yeah. No, that's a fact. You know why? Because generationally speaking, you know what I'm saying? If your mother or your father rent, they don't teach you how to rent too. They don't teach you how to do that. You know what I'm saying? But it yeah. takes somebody in the family be like, hey, no, we ain't doing it that way. Or, you know what I'm saying? Cause when I brought my house, I brought my house 10 years ago when I was married. And um, 
when we brought our house, no one in our family, my side or her side, neither neither one of us know knew, knew anything about buying a house. You know what I'm saying? So we had to learn. We had to get, get out, quote, quote, get out the mud with the house or whatnot. Because if I, if I knew what I knew now, I already did a whole different approach. But it is what it is. And that's, and that's another reason why I became an agent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be able to educate people on the finer points of what you can do with real estate and not just telling you, this is this, so I get my commission check and then be out. You know what I'm saying? I don't teach you how you can house hack, how you can leverage this for, you know, the equity you have in your home. All these things that pretty much really can get you set if you do it right. Man. No, that's dope, man. And I don't know if you are uh, familiar with uh, Jay Morrison. Oh, yeah. Jay Morrison's the man. Yeah. Like I took his uh, course, the RBC course, the real estate yeah. business and credit course. And it, like he got a lot of information on there for real. I think like getting started in real estate at all, like the first thing you need is education. I don't think you should just go out there blind. But if you do go out there blind, you're going to learn a uh, majority of the things by making mistakes anyway. So you can oh, have yeah. education and still make mistakes. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get me a house probably in August, but I stay out in Tampa, Florida now, but I am from Cleveland, Ohio. No, listen, hey, listen, hey, I, hey, I say you really, you long distance uh, best, man. A lot of people sleep on that. Like, a, I don't know how the uh, the Florida market is down there in, uh, down there in Tampa, but I know in Cleveland, you can buy your house up here, get the rents up here, and you know what I'm saying? Uh, fun your lot your lifestyle down there in Tampa, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Because my family, they still in Cleveland, Ohio. But once I got out the army, I was already like in state to state and out the country and stuff. So I, when I got out, I relocated to here, you know, to Tampa, Florida. Me and my yeah. fiance, we stay out here. So, but the housing market out here is nothing like Ohio. Like for a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, you still might get some trash. $250,000 in Ohio, you're oh, going to yeah. get your money's worth. You get a whole match. <laughs> yeah. So the housing market is real different. And yeah. I'm like thinking about moving back to Ohio to get a better house. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to like, yeah, it might appreciate and value down here. But at yeah. the same time, if I'm spending $250,000, I want to make sure I got at least 1,500 square feet or 1,400 about square feet. Mm -hmm. I'm about <laughs> You, 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 you get more bang for your buck up here, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get at least a half acre messing around with a 250,000, even an acre or two, you know what I'm saying? Versus, like, you know what I'm saying, Florida's, the New York's, and the Californians, where 250,000 gets you a studio apartment somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I know that you mentioned that uh you and your team, like, y'all do credit as well, right? Mm-hmm. Man, that's, that's so important, man. Like, Cause I didn't dive deep in credit repair too. And now I'm like trying to focus on consumer law. You probably yeah. know about that. That's mm -hmm. kind of like the way right now in a sense, if you look on social media, a lot of people are trying to learn consumer law. Cause like the credit repair stuff is cool, but I feel like the consumer law is a different beast. Oh yeah, it's a whole different beast. And my thing yeah. is this like, you, a lot of people don't know the rights you have as, you know what I'm saying? As an American citizen, when it comes down to this, like, you know what I'm saying? You think you at the, the mercy of these companies, no, you got rights too, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and I think once again, like, like you said, the whole credit piece, like we, a lot of us, when we grow up, I don't know what year you came out of high school, but when I came out of high school and they offered me a credit card, I blew it like, like, you know what I'm saying? It's free money when not knowing that is a consequence behind me, not paying it off, not me just maxing out the car, stuff like that. And, right. Um, the biggest thing when I'm, when I meet with clients, the big obstacle they got is either down payment or the credit. So my thing is this, be smart about it. If your obstacle is credit, well, I don't help your credit. Instead of me having to send you to someone else, I can do, I can, I can do it. And to me, that builds up a type of loyalty to the, to the client. They're like, I don't deal with you because you have my credit. Where's it going to the next guy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My mentor and broker, he taught me, you know what I'm saying? Like every agent likes to go for that perfect client. All right, got everything together. The market or the, all the clients are the ones that all oh, got it jacked up. You go for them, you're going to have forever out business. He's, he's goddamn right. <laughs> that's crazy that, yeah, that is crazy that's a different approach or a different way to look at it man so how important is credit when it comes to purchasing a home because some people think you need this crazy 750 credit score and realistically you don't and listen uh the, you know so crazy about this market it's so it's so i say backwards but it's crazy because you right now you can get a great interest rate like i think like 3.4 and like that all matters when, when can i tell mortgage guys when i say that and the crazy part about it, the inventory is low. So you can you you can get pre-approved for a house real fast, but the houses is, are are in scarcity right now. So with your credit, your credit score plays a major part in 
you getting approved for uh, a loan to get a house, right? But right now, right now, I can get people approved for four to 580 credit score. And I don't think a lot of people know that, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot, some loans will let you, I'm not saying get away, will we'll, we'll approve you with a 580 credit score. Late, wow. a couple late payments on there. Like it's more, it's more lax. When I, when I brought my house, oh bro, you, uh, I need, need a 640 above, no late payments. Um, no, no, no more than two inquiries on your credit report. Like it had to, you had to, you had to be, you had to be good, you know, versus now it's a little more relaxed because once again, um, with bank reg regulations, I don't think they lax themselves. We ain't going back to 2008, but you know what I'm saying? It's not as strenuous as it was before because come out of 2008, 2009, banking restrictions were, mm, you can, they, they were ironclad versus now it's kind of like, okay, we got, we got better understanding where we messed up in 2008. But that was right after the recession, right? Right, 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 right. My bad. Yeah, I'm about to say we uh what they what they call the great uh great recession or whatnot. That's when uh the banking uh system was all bad. They, they, they were giving out houses to people working at McDonald's, whole mansions, you know. What I ain't <laughs> know. Yeah, no, listen, <laughs> when it's so fucking I'll be at the office and because everybody in the office, like I'm like one of three agents were like young, everybody else owned nothing, my dad or mom, right? And they talk about like it, it was the good old days, you know what I'm saying? You buy a house for a thousand dollar, a whole mansion, you know what I'm saying, and not have the actual, uh, the actual money to back it up, you know what I'm saying, and then that's how everything collapsed because <laughs> people were buying these houses without knowing, not, not, oh, not, not, not having the money to afford them, and um, the banks couldn't sustain that. So now banking regulations are a little bit more strenuous when they make sure you got all your paperwork in place, you have the uh, work history, ever all these things, and uh, now, like I said, nowadays you can mess around. And get a get a get pre approval with just a five year credit score, um, but you still gotta have you still gotta have a work history. That, that, that's important, guys. And you still gotta have, and you can get away with only having to put down one percent versus three percent for a down payment. Is this conventional or FHA? This is conventional, conventional oh. loan. Yep, and and I don't think so. Just you know, for your for your audience, like nowadays when people are are looking to uh, buy a home, the sellers are now being picky with that. They can say. I don't want to do FHA loan and do a conventional loan. And the reason being is that with a conventional loan, it's not the same regulations that it would be with FHA loan. Mm -hmm. Like with the FHA loan, I got to do an inspection, they got to have certain things in the house. And, and the sellers are like, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to deal with that because the market that we're in, they can, they can be choosy, right? Versus right. before, it wasn't that way. So let's keep that in mind, guys. Like when you get a loan, try to go conventional because that's the ones that the sellers are looking for. And I've been hearing, um like different sellers in different, or at least the market out here, mm -hmm. instead of you using, like me, I'm a vet, they don't want to accept people with VA loans. Some of them want to accept all the money up front, like in cash. Oh yeah, cash, yeah, you yeah. know, cash, cat, what, 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 what was saying say, cash move everything around me, that's the same thing in this market we in, for real, for real. Um, <laughs> the reason why cash, cash, cash is, is top because with a loan, you know what I'm saying, come, it, it, come, come, it's a lot more strenuous, like it's gonna take 30 days out, cash, we can get done like in the very next week, especially if someone trying to move is trying to move the house real fast. So if I got a cash deal, so if I got a house set up for hundred thousand, right? And you tell me you got ninety thousand in cash, but a loan for hundred thousand, I'm going with ninety thousand because that that's gonna move faster, as far as me closing a lot a lot, a lot sooner. So that's why um, if you ever look at a listing, they'll say cash, conventional, FHA, then VA, as far as what what, what they'll sell. All right. So as an African-American or any other minority group, is there any programs that they have in place that you can get home with like little cost will get a home with little cost? So I want to say more so African-American, but I will say if if you guys Google down payments as a program, so you Google um, just all these first time home owner programs, you'll find and even around your, your own neighborhood not even in tampa cleveland just in your wherever you're at you just google it and you'll come up it'll be programs for single mother there'll be programs for you know for you know if you're under so much that you make a year or whatnot you just gotta look or partner with the right real estate agent <laughs> the real estate agent should be should, should know some of these programs like in cleveland where i'm at I'm pushing this thing out like it's it's Gucci right now. It's a program with this um, nonprofit called uh, Cleveland Housing Network, mm -hmm. and like I said, they're 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 getting people approved with a 580 credit score, which is unheard of. And the government is 
it's government funded, and that's why with, with those pulp grants, you gotta jump on real quick because when the funding runs out, so does you know what I'm saying those loans. So you okay. gotta get them real quick. So yeah. No, that's good information because I ain't know all that. Like I ain't know all that. It, yeah. Uh, you know the little course that I learned, the RBC course. He never really mentioned that program, like for like mothers. Mm -hmm. so I yeah, I wasn't even hip to that. Oh, listen, like I said, you Google it and it, it, it should come right up. And like I said, you probably don't the right real estate agent. If they're familiar with their with the city, they should know. Like I can tell you right now, Cleveland is about four programs I know I get you approved for. You know what I'm saying? And not even wish you being a vet. You know what I'm saying? That can get you pre-approved prior that same that's that same week. So just gotta give some knowledge. So say if I wanted my first home, right, to be like a duplex or a fourplex, but the lenders say I don't make enough money, what could I do? Oh, that's such a dope question. So I, I don't know if your audience is familiar with house hacking, but it's a term of what uh, that I like to say. Um, so for anybody, so I, one of the reasons why I'm trying to get into school is because I'm trying to educate the, these kids who are like seniors in high school about to go to college. Mm -hmm. And they've been working me down for two years, right? I mean, then I think what uh, a part-time worker makes about what twenty thousand, something like that. Not even that, somewhere around there. Probably, probably twelve thousand if I would be twelve thousand, right, right. And I and I, I'm trying to teach them they can mess around and become real estate investors at eighteen. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is by like I said, buying a duplex, buying a duplex or a triplex, whatever may be available, mm -hmm. uh, buying it. And what happens is they'll take your 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 two years of working at McDonald's, right? Because you got now you got a proof of income, and you have a salary that you're making. But then I'll take that you got those two units or one unit as your overall your your overall income as a whole, and I'll factor that all in. So now you went from twelve thousand to now now you you're you're gonna have yearly set a uh, yearly income of forty thousand now, right? And now that, that will help you get pre-approved for that for that for that triplex or or duplex now. So if I learned it correctly, if I remember, it's called uh, total earned income, right? Right, 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 right. And okay. the rental income is now, <laughs> now right, right. And, that, and, that, and now that, that 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 potential rental income is now part of your your overall income now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that, and that and that that gets you approved versus your just your McDonald's salary or whatnot. And even with that, it's it's strategies around everything. When I tell you, it's the way around everything. It really is, man. Because you can then come in with a, let's say you get a roommate, both of y'all are McDonald's now, you know what I'm saying? Now you yeah. got 24,000, you know what I'm saying? Which was again, makes you guys look better on paper and you guys, and if they manage their credit properly, they can become real estate, eight, uh, I mean, real estate, I'm sorry, real estate investors at 18. Can you imagine the 18 be real estate, you know what I'm saying? Be a real estate investor. Man, that would, man, if I seen that, that would be dope. Cause I've been seeing a lot of people like uh, younger, that's been wholesaling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know some real estate agents might not like the wholesalers because like the wholesalers, you basically being the middleman. And honestly, if you not an agent and you trying to find your way in, I, I kind of recommend it. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I, get salute, your I, 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 I salute wholesalers, you know what I'm saying? At my brokerage, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it's, it's not 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 a bad competition, but my broker always saying like, how, how, how are we going to get the market back in the wholesalers? Because I, uh, it's, a, it's a study out there that said 40 percent of the market share is 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 being taken by wholesalers and ain't by other agents it's wholesalers i ain't know that either yeah because they out there they out there getting it you know what i'm saying they don't want to call you at dinner they're the ones who are um uh, who are uh putting mailers in your mailbox versus real estate agents they wait for you to come to them wholesalers are going to the actual seller yeah you know what i'm saying so you gotta respect the hustle and uh i know real estate agents they 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 they, they, they got a bone to pay with them i i I'm I'm sitting down. What I'm asking, like, let me learn from you. You know what I'm saying? Because right. the approach you you using is obviously working. My approach ain't working, or or used to not work. But yeah, no, I meet with hosts all the time. Like I got hosts that I work with that if I can't get none on on the if they can't get a deal on the wholesale side, they come to see me on the retail side, mm -hmm. and just vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Because why let that business go? Why why let that deal sizzle out when you can find a solution to a problem? You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. So. Right. Yeah, like uh, in 2020, I think I started learning about wholesaling. Oh, I had a, I had a house in in Pennsylvania under contract, and for whatever reason, I still was new, but I couldn't find an investor to do it because like most of the investors, basically, I'm gonna say that I locked in the deal too high. So hmm. when I proposed that contract to an investor, he was trying to talk me lower than what I offered the seller. Hmm. See what I'm saying? So in a yeah. sense man i put down 
I think a thousand dollars in the way that I learned wholesaling, I shouldn't have put that much down for the um, escrow or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I was I'm like, glad, but hey, you, hey, you learn, right? You learn, you never do it again, right? <laughs> no, I never do it again. And low key, I kind of was like, okay, let me just try to learn that a little bit more. And then once it's time, I'm gonna go back into it when I got more time. Cause like uh, using prop stream, most people don't know about that, but you can go in there and look at like houses that uh, say don't have that much uh, money that's owed to it, uh, good condition, you know, cheap yeah. houses that you can go to the seller. Propose that, I don't wanna say too much about wholesaling, but basically you looking for people that's trying to sell their house. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you middleman the deal, so. No, hey, listen. That's a learning experience, so. though. I, that, that, before I before I became a real estate agent, I, I, I was out here wholesaling. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I, my my hat goes off to him because, like I said, you are hustling. And I, I if we we'll spend a whole another hour with all the same mistakes I made. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What I, in wholesaling, it was all bad. It was all bad. Like I mess around. I um I, I so I I let the the investor meet with the with the seller, and I got caught oh. off the deal. Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. I, I learned the hard way. Bro. <laughs> so, so what happens in that case? Because that almost happened to me. I got cut out the deal. I got yeah, cut out the whole deal. But if you have them, see, this is what I learned. I could be wrong, but what I learned is if you have them under contract, they can't do that. Oh no! Yeah, that's, and, and that's not that's, that's another mistake I made. I didn't have them in the contract. It's all it's all word of mouth. Oh man! Yeah, exactly. And he knew that, and he was smart. He was like, "Oh, so you didn't get in the contract yet?" And I'm th I'm thinking everything's sweet. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I so. feel that, man. <laughs> it's crazy because people, that's anything in life. People kind of prey on our ignorance, you know what I'm saying? And us not knowing. And that's why I was like, man, I need to know a little bit about everything. Everything mm -hmm. I'm doing or trying to do, I got to learn a little bit about just so I don't get played or whatever. But, you know, it's going to be people that got skin in the game that's going to take advantage of the new people just to make some money. So. Mm -hmm. No, hey, listen, you live and you learn. My thing is, I, I, I rather fail forward than I try at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I fail, that's fine. I learned. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you what, first off top meeting, contract, boom, here we go. Let's let's get that off, off top versus, oh, no, I'll take any word on it. Man, forget that. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. <laughs> yeah, so I know you talked about the conventional loan, and we spoke a little bit about the, F, uh, the VA loan. But what do you think the better loan is between the FHA, the VA loan and conventional loan. Hmm. So shout out to our veterans, man. That, them, them VA loans is is is, is, uh, is is the dopest loan I've ever seen in my life because you ain't got to put the money down. So I mean, it all depends on what you're trying to do. It all depends on who who's doing it. But to me, if I say like an overall loan that works best, that I like like right back to the conventional loan because isn't that a strenuous with a with an FHA loan and FHA loan FHA, FHA loan is just a uh, what saying, first time homeowner's loan. And uh reason why I said because conventional loans, you can get done a whole lot faster than the FHA loan because it goes through so many different um, strenuous processes that most sellers don't want to deal with it. Inspections, this and that. And if they don't seem and deem it possible, it's not going through. Versus conventional loan is not as strenuous, you know what I'm saying? And then you can actually, um, it's, it's a lot of different things. Like a seller can put down, help put down some more for the down payment. So, you you know what I'm saying? They can get the deal done a lot faster and with different options versus the FHA, FHA loan, which is a lot more strenuous. VA, once again, I, man, I'm working with a client right now. She invested. She got approved for $600,000, man. $600,000 off time. I'm like, dang. And she got put down no hmm? Yes, yeah, she, she a veteran. veteran. Yes, yeah, she a veteran. You know what I'm saying? And like, my thing is like this, like she ain't put the money down. So she could buy, we, 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 so with a, we found with a, uh, with a VA loan, you can only get up to like a, 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 a four, a four suites, uh, a four, a four, a four, a four, a four unit uh, residential uh, place where it comes commercial. So you can't get any commercial with VA, but you can't get up to four, to get up to a four suiter. So a commercial is, commercial unit is over five units, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. And you find out the hard way because that's what that's as soon as you heard she got seven thousand, that's she went she went straight to the top, which I respect. But we found out the hard way that you only do residential. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's but, crazy. That's still good though. Like, oh yeah, no, no, it's good, it's good. You know what I'm saying? But when you hear six hundred thousand, you you like you going straight to the top. Like I'm gonna give you a whole building. You know I what can't... else I found out? Um, not to cut you off, but something you... else that I found out was if you have one VA loan, 
you can use that for another, well, not use that loan, but you can get approved for another VA loan as well. And I didn't know that. Bro, and let me tell you this, I, I, I won't say, but I know this other uh, veteran that's using the VA loan. She uh, she took out, so she, when she got approved for one, she went and went to apply for three other ones. So she got approved three times. At the same time, right? At the same damn time. And what and, and this is another play that everybody don't ain't hit to. You can get approved multiple times and you can use all three. Because what happens is you got 30 days to, to lock that down, three different units, and they can't do nothing about it. Yeah, but honestly, they won't be able to see that either. Like, because uh, mm -hmm. they don't go off your credit report. If I'm saying it correct, stop you me. Are, right. No, you're right. That's the same thing with cars too. Like if you want to hop on the Turo stuff, not trying to take it away from that, but if you wanted to get five cars, you know, the uh, it so it'll hit your credit as an inquiry, but it won't show up on your report to like 30 days later, maybe. Exactly. Sometimes more. So if you can do that with houses, man, and get like four units here, four units here, four units here. Hey, man, it's a no-brainer. Like, listen, 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 bro. Like that's why I, I, I love, I love this real estate thing. And like you said, though, like and like you said, like uh, Wall Street Trapper. I don't know if y'all hit the Wall Street Trapper. I never. <laughs> Man, listen. When when he, he he was on he was on um, who podcast is he on? Come a podcast head. He was on Black uh, Wolf Frankenstein, and he said he said in order to play the game, you gotta know the rules. You know what I'm saying? Once you know the rules, you can play the game. And man, when he said that, man, it just changed my whole mindset. Like you're right, you gotta know you gotta know how to play. And you know what I'm saying? I know we as the people, we we're behind the eight ball in that. You know what I'm saying? But once we know it though, we 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 getting it now. Yeah. I think it's been a change since like the pandemic started as far as like our people, the ones that's the risk takers and the one that's ones that want to change their situation. I've been seeing a lot of people in different courses, like buying different mentorships. Like me, I'm a mentorship person. I'm always in the mentorship, mm -hmm. buying books. I'm trying to, people might say, yeah, he a nerd, this and that. I don't care what you say. I'm gonna change my whole family structure. That's what I'm on. That's and true. I could say like, all the information I learned with credit, Turo, a little bit about real estate, learning this consumer law. Once I get like, you will never perfect it all the way, but once I get so close to learning everything about it, I'm gonna be, you can't fuck with me. Like not trying to be funny, excuse my language, but you it's good. like, I'm gonna be working my ass off to always keep my hands on everything. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's how we should carry it in. I feel like people, before was relying on jobs. Now, just even speaking now, people not relying on no job no more because they see that they can do it themselves. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And all this potential that we've been had, it came out during the pandemic even more. Yeah. So, no, that's a fact. Uh, I, I shout out to Black Wolf Renaissance because they had, they, they're talking about like, we went through a whole, like our whole renaissance. Like you said, during the pandemic, earn your leisure, Black Wolf Renaissance, all these podcasts come out and uh, like financial literacy was just that was the newest craze, and now it just, it's growing. It's a it's a it's a phenomenon. I like I was in the barbershop the other day, bro. We in the barbershop, you know, the barbershop back in the day. You know, so we talk about rappers. We talk about all this not this shit that don't matter. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff that not paying us, not even real information. We just get debating about who can rap better. Bullshit. <laughs> in the barbershop, we talking about stocks now. We talking about you know what I'm saying actual yeah. ways to like grow our wealth, which is blowing my mind. You know what I'm saying? I'm like this wasn't talked about a minute back. You know what I'm saying? But it's, yep. it's, it's a new wave though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and honestly, with this information, I believe like in the black community, I feel like with all this information we learn and stuff like this, we can bring down the crime rate, we can stop the murder rate, everything. Yeah. I, I believe people that's getting out of jail, they end up going back because they ain't have access to the information that we've been tapping into. But yeah. if they get a hold of this and start like doing trucking or something like that, and then they have a fleet of trucks that never want to be in the streets again. No, that's facts. And my thing is this though, and this is what we gotta be careful of because now it, we are learning. I just, my, my, I say not my fear, but my worry is that as soon as we, enough of us get on, they on, they on switch it on us again, you know what I'm saying? And then you kind of see it with the whole metaverse thing, you know what I'm saying? Like now, now we, now we over here now, you know what I'm saying? So do we gotta be careful and do our due diligence, you know what I'm saying? And like you said, because I feel like we kind of behind the eight ball on that because this stuff they've been learning since they was kids, they kids, kids, and stuff like that, right? Now they're on a new way with the metaverse. We gotta make sure we just gotta continue learning, you know what I'm saying, and continue to progress as a people. 
and now I get stagnant. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing it for what it is. Um, I'm even on the real estate side, I'm seeing like people are buying real estate in, in, in the metaverse now. Like that's a, that's a big thing. Like people are actually buying virtual land. And my thing is just, like, you know what I'm saying? We gotta make, make sure we, we stay on the cut of edge. Of course, the, keep learning, keep knowing the present, but don't just stay here, look toward the future. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely, definitely. So I guess speaking on like home ownership, right? Why do you feel like people like the mindset of home ownership? Cause they, a lot of times, I think a lot of people seen it possible when they grow, growing up. If your mom was a runner, the grandmother's a runner, mm-hmm. or if your, you know what I'm saying, your, your great grandfather's a runner, you know what I'm saying, that's all, that's all you know. And it takes a, a real mindset shift. Like for me, like, unfortunately, my mom, my grandmother, my aunts, my uncles, everybody running, right? So that's all I knew. And it wasn't until someone told me, you know what I'm saying, when I, after I got married, so having kids, like, we need to get them out, out, out of here and, and move somewhere else. Um, so my thing is it, it comes back to mindset, you know what I'm saying? One, to be shown as possible, and two, like you said, mentorship. Mentorship is key. Uh, I know it's cliche to say, but it is what it is. The book that did it for me was Rich Dad Poor Dad, you know what I'm saying? I understand that's a legendary book, right? It's legendary book. I promise you, it would it will. I I I read that book, I looked at everything different. It was like the like my glasses came off and I'm seeing things in a whole new light, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And one of the things that it, 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 it emphasizes on is investing in your house is literally an investment. It's one of the most important ones you will ever make in your life. You know what I'm saying? But um, once it went, it's mindset. It's mindset really is. That's what it boils down to. So, and that's why I, I push it so hard. I uh, mean, doing this nonprofit, Legacy Starts, is because Legacy, and, and the cash, the, the, the tagline, Legacy Starts with you. You got to be the one you gonna be the one to change it for your family. Like you said, for you and your family, same thing. My family, same thing. You know, it takes one, one to be like, oh, they're, 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 they're go Brandon over there reading his books. You mm-hmm. don't think, think you think you better than anybody else could get a house? No, no, I don't think I'm better than anyone else. Do you wanna know how to do this too? Yeah. You know, I can teach you, I yeah, can show I, you. At this point, I'm just trying to build a legacy. Like, That's like let's good. leave our family some. When I leave this earth, I wanna be able to leave land, I want to leave properties, like life insurance. I want that to be high. You know what I'm saying? I want all my nieces and nephews, my son, like they all need to start with something. Because a lot right. of us, when we turn 18, we go into a community college, maybe. Then we might transfer over to a university. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like what now? Like we don't have anything. And we owe student loans. And now we're trying to get a car. We're struggling. Like I don't want my kids or nieces and nephews to struggle for nothing. And I can say legacy is the most slept on thing in our culture. Like most people ain't think like that. They just live in the live. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I, it kind of, it kind of bothers me when I get on the internet or I get on social media and like someone passed away and everybody acts yeah. like, go fund me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, and it's unfortunate that, you know what I'm saying? That we got to do that instead of actually getting a life insurance policy. One of the things I learned, you know what I'm saying? From one of my clients was that in the Jewish community, what they do is that, and that's how they build wealth. They do it through insurance for so while. They'll get an insurance policy of the, of the eldest person in the family. They know they're going to die. They know they're going to die. And that's another, another right. thing. We get out the mindset. We're all going to die, right? Mm-hmm. And with them knowing they're about to pass away soon, all the uh, the eldest in the family, they'll get an insurance policy on that person. And they'll pay together. And I'm talking about the highest. I'm talking about like 80 million, something crazy, right? right. And they're all paying on it, right? Good. Yep, they're paying on it. And when that person passes away, guess what? Everyone will pay on it money getting distributed and they do it all over again mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah and it makes may, so they're able to marry a person but then at the time same time they've been a wealth so someone in the family wants to build a business well here go about a hundred thousand right here i got i got it you know what i'm saying from right. the policy from right here you know what i'm saying but that's what i mean as a perfect example once again not knowing these tactics or whatnot yeah but that's a gym that's a gym right there and then it's like the person that passed away he or she probably didn't want to pass away, but they know like, okay, when I pass away, my family gonna be in a better position. Mm-hmm. It's going. So exactly. The and funeral just, probably was more of a celebration. Man, listen, I, listen. I was in church. The pastor said something real. He said, when you pass away, people gonna be sad, but they should also be, you know, what I'm saying, also be like excited, like, not excited, but you know, what I'm saying, like glad, like you know, what I'm saying, like thank you, you know, what I'm saying, because you did something that's gonna put me in a better position. And that's how it should be versus. 
everyone's sad, everyone's scrambling to see, you know, how we're gonna pay for this, how we're gonna pay for that, how we'll take care of this. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, no, listen, the power, the power. And once again, that's a tactic that we didn't know nothing about. You go to a, you go, you go to your family and tell your to your aunt, we'll put a certain policy, what the first thing she's gonna say? You trying to kill me? You trying you, you know what I'm saying? You trying you trying you trying to take me out? Like, no, you uh. <laughs> I'm saying like you you about to pass away like let's make sure you got something in position so it's a mindset thing for real for real yeah like just to speak on like my situation like uh, one of my uncles he just passed away about a couple months ago he had a life insurance policy but it was only like three thousand dollars mm. you know what I'm saying and like before he passed away his son passed away a couple months before so. Mm. Like his son, I don't, I don't think his son had a life insurance policy, but he had one for himself, my uncle. And yeah. he passed away. Yeah, it covered a, a little bit of the funeral. But for the most part, it's like you didn't leave your kids or your your family with anything. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's, you know, that's kind of where we go wrong in the black community. Like, I feel like everybody should have life insurance because like our time on this earth, it's like you can't predict when you go leave. Mm-hmm. Like, can't because you saying random people pass away that you like he wasn't even into nothing yeah. how they murdered or mm-hmm. you know, like Shoot. it's like you thinking it, it won't be you and it can be you any day any moment day. Any time. that's a fact bro that's a fact that's a fact like i'm pretty sure people no one will leave out the house in the morning saying i'm gonna die today you know what i'm saying like they go out going to work going out seeing this person and thinking everything's sweet when they you know what i'm saying they don't know it's the last time they can walk out the house and i think we just got to wrap our heads around that you know what i'm saying like death's inevitable but what you like you said legacy if you, if you think about how this is going to affect my my future for not only for myself but for those around me i think er, everyone will move differently if they did that way you know what i'm saying no definitely so can you uh tell me about your rent to own program so uh it's a couple different programs uh my thing is that uh, if you guys go on the internet, once again, Google is a monster, but it's a program I, I directly deal with called Divi. And what happens is they'll buy the house for you. They'll actually go out and buy it. And what happens in, in, in three to five years, you're making payments, but part of the payment is going towards a down payment toward the house. So they're pretty much grooming you for home ownership. The only flip side to it that I warn my clients that you're going to pay more than you would normal rents for it. So... And my thing is this, and I and I, I will say this the day I die: if you can rent, you can own. That's a fact, because yeah. the the fact of the matter you're paying this money, this uh, the amount of money you're paying towards rent, I can guarantee you, oh, you'll pay a whole lot less in in a, in a mortgage. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, and once again, it's all about your situation. Like rent on park, I'm not knocking them. You know what I'm saying? Because the situation. A lot of people they might not want to own because they're gonna they they're, they're gonna be somewhere else soon. They're gonna be going to another state or whatever. So I get that. But if you're gonna be living there for the next five to ten years, why not own? And then you know what I'm saying get the appreciation, take the appreciation and go put it towards something else. And I don't mean I don't know if your if your viewers know what appreciation is, but that's why a house is an investment because over time, like take from me, well, this is my house right now. I brought mm-hmm. this house ten years ago and I brought it ten years ago. I brought at seventy four thousand. Right now, it's valued at one hundred and twenty two. Last time I checked, so it's about almost double in ten years. And I have not done anything extra to this house. Nothing, no new addition, no nothing. That's but in cool. ten years worth of time, uh, it's double in value. So that's what I mean by that. That's appreciation, and um, that's something you can leverage. Because if I sell my house today. I would have made my money back. The loan I owe, I initially paid the that I got to go to the bank, paid that back, and then made extra. So that's what I mean by that. So that's smart. Yeah. So I know we was uh actually I don't even think we touched on it, but the debt to in the debt to income ratio, how important is that when it comes to buying a house? Oh, it's very important. Uh, the reason being because, and like I look back to what I was saying before about how in 2008, 2009, how they were giving out loans to people who worked at McDonald's and they're giving them a million dollar uh, loans, right? Mm-hmm. The reason why that's so important because your debt to income ratio determines how much they can loan you because that, that that goes to show how much you can pay back to the bank, right? Mm-hmm. If you only make so much money, but if you got a car payment, credit cards, child support payments, all these things that at the end of the month make your check smaller, 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 why would the bank give you a loan that you know you really couldn't afford to begin with? Mm. 
So uh, I always tell my clients, the rule of thumb is that you want to have, you want to have 40% or less that you owe in debt. Mm. Right. And that's, and, and it's, it's different ways you can go about that. I know, you know what I'm saying? And my thing is this, when I, when I brought my house, I had a lot of debt, right? And for one year straight, I, I, I had a full-time job, but I picked up a part-time job to pay some of it down. So to make my debt to income ratio smaller, mm. you know what I'm saying? And pay off debt. I mean, that's the sad part about it. A lot of people don't know, like, you got to pay that debt or it's always around everything. Let me say that, y'all. But now that y'all get my podcast from the time. So it's, it's strategies and it's ways about around everything. You know what I'm saying? And I, and that's why I shout out to dealing with different people in different and different structures of my life, because I learned some things and you just got to make sure that you take care of certain things and it all matters about how you take care of it. So pay that debt down or find a way to have it paid down. Yeah. And, um, and another thing to touch on, uh, something that I did, like I already had one car payment, but when I got my other car, I re refinanced in my business name. So I took that debt away. And sure, man, that's, and that, and that, that, that's a perfect example in, in, in that too. So another strategy that I found out that people will build these businesses, uh, build a business credit, let's say they, they still loans is like 50,000, right? Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll build up their business credit and that's a whole nother story in itself. Um, and get a, and, and get a, and get a, a, a American Express fifty thousand. Pay out the student loan. Let the business dissolve. Student loans paid off. No longer student debt. Mm, wait. So you saying that they put it on a business credit card? Pay it off. Mm, pay it, it off. It don't reflect on the personal. Exactly. Business credit card. Mm hmm. And let the whole business dissolve, and then no longer student loan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they can't. Call it. No, no, listen, bro, listen. I'm, once again, learning that from dealing with different people. My thing is, it's all about strategy, man. You know what I'm saying? Because student loans, like now, it's so crazy. that, But that was almost five years ago when student loans were, were, were a big factor on, you know what I'm saying, on your income ratio. Nowadays, it's not as bad because you already know uh, money bags. Joe's one of his campaign promises was that, you know what I'm saying, he's going to take it away. So banks are a little bit more lenient on that nowadays. Back versus five years ago, if you had student loans, it was, it was a done deal. You know what I'm saying? But that was a strategy that back then. But that same principle can be used toward a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? Like, now you guys just be student loans. But that's something that uh, our, our, uh, our, our uh, other counterparts do all the time that we don't, that we didn't know about. And that's, that was a dope strategy right there. Like, you can <laughs> buy that to a lot of stuff. But uh, you got some people, I mean, I don't want to give up the juice, but you got some people that might buy a car on a business credit card, but of course, you know, you use the cash from the credit card and you will buy a car. And if that credit card don't have like no interest for like 12 months, they'll like do stuff to help the car like make money. So they use the car as like a asset, you know, mm -hmm. that vehicle to make money. Then they pay off the credit card before the 12 months and the interest it. So it's like, it's a lot of different ways to make money, to get your debt down. like you don't have to rely just on one source of income. And that's something I learned. As soon as I got out the army, I'm like, I'm about to tighten up on financial literacy and I need to be sharp. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Cause man, it's been times where I'm like, man, I ain't sharp at all in this. Like you talking to me, I don't know what you talking about. You talking about real estate, you talking yeah. about credit. I really don't know, but I always had a good credit score. Like yeah. since I started building it, uh, my mom always used to tell me because she always had bad credit. Like, hey, make sure you pay all your bills on time. She never told me how to use a credit card, but that stuff I had to go learn on my own. It's like financial literacy. You kind of see sometimes from watching your parents struggle. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I can't be like that. Yeah. No, listen, uh, you know what? I think our parents recognize like, you know, so I guess run the theory, right? So my dad generation, they they believe in like holding information, like holding it near and dear. And you got to figure it out. Like I had to figure it out. Versus us, we giving the whole game. Like, hey, bro. Because my thing is this, like I, I I literally meet with people like every other day. And someone asks me, hey, Brendan, how you do this? And I, I don't mind getting away. Like, I, I, you know what I'm saying? But my thing is this, like, if I get, and, and like what well, other, 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 other real estate agents, I'll tell them how I do things or whatever. It, it comes down to execution, execution, man. Cause you, I can tell you something all day and I can even put it to where you understand it. But if you, you're not going to do it, then you kind of waste some me and your time. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what, I, that's what I run to a lot of times. Cause I get somebody a whole play and but like, Oh yeah, that's dope. 
And then I check back with them and they're like, no, I haven't started yet. I'm like, damn. Yeah, that happened all the time to me. Like all the time. <laughs> the stuff, information I be giving out, man, my other Instagram page, Instagram took my page away, I don't know why. But mm. on there, I was giving a whole bunch of like financial literacy tips, stuff I didn't learn. And in my head, it's like, man, I'm kind of giving this away for free too much. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm paying thousands of dollars to learn and stuff. And I'm coming on here trying to educate the community. Am I, it's like, am I doing myself a disservice? Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, so David Shams, I don't know if you hip to David Shams, man, but he, he said, <laughs> oh, you hip? He said, he said something profound and he, it changed my whole. So I got a lot of free stuff, but I realized, I remember I was doing credit repair for free, for free, bro. Trying to and learn, I, it, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, trying to learn, trying to learn it, right, right, and I and I got better at it, right. So hmm. I was doing free, and I put, even put on social media like, hey, I help you do your credit all that stuff. Crickets, crickets, bro. And then I started doing it for other people, you know, what I'm saying my family and whatever. But when I start charging, is when people start gravitating to it. And reason why I said that is important because hmm. people don't put value on things. If you don't put a value on the people, no one else is gonna put a value on it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And when I started charging, people was like, oh, yeah, I do it. I'm like, that's crazy, like, for free? But I thought free would have would have went. But no, not at all. And I think because people got, they got, when you invest, you more invested yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Especially right. the higher dollar amount, oh, I'm going to get my return on investment on this. You know what I'm saying? I know me, if I pay that out for a course or I, I pay $600, I, I'm like, you, bro, I, I got, I got, I got libraries of just audio, books, courses that I brought. That I'm I'm getting my return investment, like you said, Jay Morrison, Isaac Isaac Grace. I yeah. got I got his course. You know what I'm saying? His whole of course or whatever. All the different things that I paid this money for, I'm getting my money back on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. But to go back to what you said. You can't. You can you can give out free game, but I found that people only only um, really invest when when you make an investment when you, when you tell them they got to make an investment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and even like speaking on like credit repair when I first started. I like try to help family for free. But then once I start posting on social media, I'm like, okay, hey, look, I just started credit repair. I'm doing it for 250. Now, when I was doing it for 250, I was getting people, but I wasn't getting people like that. And then once I started learning it more and more, that's when I went up on the price to like 600. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, if I'm gonna be doing all this work, I can't do it for 250 no more. Yeah. Because you're no. dealing with clients. Hey, look, don't apply for nothing. Make sure you pay your bills on time. And mm -hmm. before you look at three months down the line, damn, you got a late payment. You just apply for five things. Like I told you to keep your utilization low on your credit card and yeah. you max your card out and not paying it down. It's like, it, it kind of make it look like you wasting your time. Oh, and, yeah, but I tell them too, like, look, I'm only repairing like this current moment today. I'm only repairing what's on your credit right now. The future is on you. <laughs> yeah. So it's on you. Yeah. Because you repair the credit all day, but if they ain't got the mindset or, or the principles down to keep to maintain it, they don't write back to you. And that's fine, but I'd rather, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather you get it right the first time. Right. Yeah. So I know that uh, since you were a real estate agent, you probably negotiate a lot. So can you speak on the power of negotiation and like when it comes to doing a real estate deal, like and provide me an example of how a buyer can talk a seller now? Hmm, that's a great question. So when I go in negotiations, I feel like I'm uh, I'm pulling a whole Kanye West back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm grabbing the mic away from Taylor Swift type of action. And uh, when I when, most of the time, like so, this is my thing, guys. When you're doing negotiations, go in there with your homework done already. You know what I'm saying? Understand that um, this is this is all business. So a lot of times I will go in with the inspection already done. When I add the inspection. When the special comes back and they tell me this, this, this needs to be done, I will go back to the seller and say, hey, listen, uh, according to this report that you have a copy of, you go to page three, it says we're going to need a new roof. A new roof costs about this much right here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you initially uh, have a list of 9,000. We're coming back to you at 85 because it's going to either you take care of the roof or we'll take care of the roof and we'll reduce the price on there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um that usually works, but then also, uh, but the market that we're in right now, we're in seller, seller's market, right? So back in the day, it was different ways you can go to a piece to a, a seller if it's a whole bidding war. Like if it's three people making an offer on it, you know what I'm saying? You just got to get ready for what you willing to go 
above and beyond to get that done because nowadays if if let's say for instance someone want to buy my house and i get three different offers mm -hmm. and i'll, I'll sell my house for a hundred thousand all three are, are coming a hundred thousand well what, what we're going to do now now i can come to or one of them come to me and say well i'll pay for the closing costs boom so right and i know it's kind of unheard of for the the buyer to because it used to be the other way around so I used to pay the closing costs now buyers are, are now saying i'll pay the closing costs on on the transaction we're just saving the seller thousands of dollars right there. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's a little tidbit for anybody who who's, who's in a bidding war with, some, with, with someone over a house. Just mm -hmm. tell tell so that you don't take care of the clothing costs. That nine times out of ten works. And that's how you're gonna beat out the, the competition. Mm. No, that's that's good information. Um, so I was talking to my sister because it was something I was looking online. But are you familiar with like the Section Eight mortgage vouchers? like for people with low income so that they can buy houses? Yeah, no, I'm familiar. And the only thing about that is like, and this is, this is not saying thing against anybody in Section 8. My my mm -hmm. thing is, again, you just got to, they, they got to understand the mindset at the end. They going from only paying so much a month in rent, so mm -hmm. they don't understand the principle of having, you know what I'm saying, paying a mortgage going forward. So it's right. like me handing someone who's never handled a gun, expecting them to hit all the targets, you know what I'm saying, shooting practice, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I'm familiar with it and they give it to people, but my thing is, I feel like they selling them for failure because they don't understand the principle of, okay, you want for section eight, only paying this a month. Now you you got a mortgage that now depends on you paying it on time. And the mortgage gonna be, is going to be more than what, than what you normally will pay. So is section eight paying the, I guess like the mortgage for them or how is that done? So my thing, I don't know how it is everywhere else, but I know here in Cleveland, like it's more transitional, like, like you graduated from paying as quick, hey, and again, you they they're helping you get a home, mm -hmm. and I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're 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 paying a certain amount, but then after so much time, like it's on you, because mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people don't understand what assistance is not supposed to be a lifelong thing, you know what I'm saying? That's supposed to be a right. a long term thing. And I think uh, they're helping people try to get away from that, but I think once again, the failure is that they don't have the mindset behind it, so they right back at square one. Wow, that no, that's crazy. And that's with anything or trying to learn or start anything, you got to change your mindset first. Because if you go in anything and you got this, this lazy mindset or not to get up and go mentality, you trying to do, say, real estate or be a real estate agent, it's not going to work out for you. You're not going to be successful in it because you don't got the work ethic. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not, you're not thinking, who is this going to impact, like, your family? Like, you got to do it for somebody. You got to have some reasons, some power behind your execution. Other than that, you're not gonna really take it serious. Mm -hmm. That's a fact, bro. Yeah, That's man. Um, what else I got? So the home inspection, right? Why is that part of a real estate deal so critical? Reason why it is, cause you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be left no dud, right? Cause everything <laughs> can look good on the outside, you know what I'm saying? Or it can look good as exactly speaking. Uh -oh. Oh, dang. Hello? Dang it. Can you hear me still? Yeah, I hear you. I was going to ask, like, you got to get that phone call. No, no, hell no. My bad. And I, I hate how, how, how my phone is hooked up to my to my laptop. My bad. Yeah, that's how mine is. <laughs> my bad. I said I took that off. But I'm sorry. You. What was the question again? Um. Oh, the home inspection. Why is that oh, yeah. so cool when it comes to a real estate deal? My bad. Uh, so with a home inspection, like I said, you don't want to buy a duck because aesthetically everything can look good on the outside. But foundationally, it could be all bad. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen houses that, you know what I'm saying, look good on the outside, yard clean, everything good on the inside, going inside, it look like a trap house, you know? And then the foundation is, 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 is all bad. Structurally speaking, it's all bad. Like pretty much, it's, it's pretty much about to crumble. And that's why inspection is so important because you don't know unless you have someone with the knowledge looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Because 
to us, you know what I'm saying, some might look sweet, but further investigation, like, you know what I'm saying, like it might be termites, it might uh, termites in the, in, the, in the wood, or it might be, um, you might need you might need a new furnace, you know what I'm saying, or just these things that we're not familiar with because we're not trained to, to know. Um, and it's been a lot of times where I've, I've had, uh, and thank God for inspections because I've, I've had it where especially will make it or break you buying a home mm -hmm. because you you don't see the you don't foresee the things that are going on, and that's why it's so important. So never. So uh, a, neg a negotiating tactic that some people use is that they don't get the inspection. I advise never do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because why, why, why you advise me to not get one? That means something wrong that you don't want me to see. So if I ever come down to that, move on to the next one, guys. But they're they're important because now you're you're basically you're basically uh, making sure your investment is sound. You know what I'm saying? So never skip on the on on, on the. Um, on the inspection because you'll find the problems that you yeah you normally wouldn't even know because you don't want to be in the house a year later and the roof caves in or something like that or you go to go step on the floor coming from upstairs and you fall right right down to the basement <clears throat> no definitely um so another question i got right because i know i don't know the answer myself but a lot of people some people have bankruptcies that they just apply for within the last say two years right so if you got a bankruptcy on your credit report, like is getting a house or getting a mortgage realistic? So yes, uh, a lot of people that I, I, I've dealt with. Only thing about it, and I, I always try to advise my clients who are like looking to get a bankruptcy, I always tell them don't do it. Right. Like, like try to find another route because if you do off top two years, you gotta wait. You gotta sit down for a little bit because um, that bankruptcy, even though it gets you away from getting garnished, gets you away from them calling you like crazy, is going to put a red mark on your credit for those two years. You won't like people see that they don't. They're like, no, we can't do nothing with you mm. uh, because you know what I'm saying it, it just shows that you're not responsible with money. That's, if you <clears throat> someone says something real profound, they say your your credit score is your adult is your is like an adult uh, report, report card. Call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And all you're showing to the lenders is that I can handle money or I can't handle money. And right. when you have a bankruptcy on your on your credit report, that is saying to lenders, you're you're failing in that. No, oh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, man. No, that, that that definitely was a good answer, man. Cause a lot of people they be saying, like, I got this bankruptcy, but I'm trying to get this house. And then no. they like me doing credit repair, can you get this bankruptcy off? I tell them, like, yeah, it's a process. And if I'm saying this correct, you can stop me if I'm wrong, but a bankruptcy actually not supposed to be on your credit report, but I guess they got like Lexus, Nexus and all those uh, third party uh, consumer reporting agencies that like fish around for this information and then they find some public records and they put it on your credit report. But if you send a bankruptcy letter to the courthouse and asking them like, hey, uh, can you uh, confirm or deny that you gave or put like this bankruptcy on my credit report, most of the time they gonna say that they didn't put it on there and mm -hmm. that a third party like LexisNexis put it on there. Yeah, no. Um, Some weird and, stuff like that. <laughs> and if anybody familiar with credit repair, that's what it, that's what it comes down to. That's what basically all credit repair is. It's them verifying that these things or these accounts are verified or, you know what I'm saying, that someone can ver you know, see your signature or verify that you made these, you know what I'm saying, that you made these uh, uh, debts or whatnot. So that's what it all comes down to. Like when I talk to clients all the time, they're like, is this, you know what I'm saying, they'll ask me like, is this wrong? You know what I'm saying, cause I know I did it. And I'll be like, it's not wrong because what people don't know when it comes out to these businesses, man, businesses is, is real shrewd, man, it's real shrewd. They'll take the debt that you owe them, write it off that year, sell it to somebody else, make the money back, you know what I'm saying? And still, and still, and someone, so a lot of times people are, when they're reaching out to you, the creditors, it's not the original creditor. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a third party. And right. the third party is their responsibility to be able to say, okay, where, where's my signature at? Where's it? Show me where I said I made a debt with you. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. They can't show you at all because you never had a contract with them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think a lot of people, when they hear that, that bill collector calling their phone, they are human just like you, right? Yeah. And my thing is this, like, they've already, and they are, and like, no one gets in the business to lose money. So they already made their money back. They just trying to get more money out of you. You know what I'm saying? Because we all make mistakes. Everyone's human. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
I don't feel bad. They're like, you know what I'm saying? This is wrong. It's not wrong. What are you talking about? Like, this is this is this is business, you know? This is what it comes out business. So yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. If a debt collector ever called me and saying I owe the debt, I'm pulling some laws out because you uh, right, exactly a debt collector can't tell you that you owe a debt. Mm -hmm. right. And it's a whole bunch of like violations that I've been learning with the whole consumer law stuff that these debt collectors be doing, but because we don't know, they just be taking advantage of us. Exactly. And then like, if a debt collector called me, how do you know that you speaking to me? Mm -hmm. like, and you know what's crazy? <laughs> it's so crazy, we, we, we'll, we'll be here for another hour, bro, if we do it like this, but I tell my clients like, if you ever notice the first thing they ask you to verify who you are you know what i'm saying and whenever they do don't don't say nothing like it's like it's like interrogation with police you know what i'm saying like the first thing hey uh brandy you know what i'm saying it, verify this address for me like no you know what i'm saying verify it basically verify it to you. <laughs> right 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 yeah like, i remember uh like uh i was telling my friend about a little stuff i learned and i was on the phone with him listening to the like conversation with the debt collector and mm -hmm. he like throwing little stuff like laws at them and stuff like that. And they was like, okay, sir, we're gonna remove it from your uh, your credit report and we are gonna return the debt back to the original creditor or something like that. And basically they wash their hands with it because it's like, they know that they was violating them. Like, you know what I'm saying? But once he start using those laws and throwing this, you in violation of this, you in violation of that. Like, you know, uh, debt collectors, they don't like to do that or get sued or anything like that, but they be doing illegal stuff. Yeah, and it's been, and, and you, like you said, like you said earlier before, they, they, they pry on our ignorance, man. They know that we don't know, so they pry on it, you know what I'm saying? They put that fear in us, like, oh, oh, you calling me at home, you know my number? Man, pfft. I ain't <laughs> right. worried about you, because I know it's business, I get it, you know what I'm saying? You, But just know you messed the wrong one calling me. Right. You called the wrong person today. <laughs> right, yeah, right, right. I got two more questions. We gonna end it on this. Um, Cause I know you got stuff to do. Um, you good, what bro. Services, oh yeah. What services are provided during your consultations that you provide? So for me, my, my, mine is I literally lay out, lay out a plan for you. Like we gonna, we, like, so clients come in all different shapes of forms, right? So mm -hmm. my thing is this, I might have a client that all they need all they need was just the right, the right motivation to get them in the, you know what I'm saying, to get them to become a homeowner, right? Some people, they need the whole, they, it's like exercise. They got, they got to go through, they got to go through everything, right? So uh, I credit literally come on the plan. So if I sit down with you and you tell me, well, Brandon, I, I need help with my credit. I need help with getting my down payment. I, I need the whole shebang. And I'm like, that's fine. So we're going to map out the next three months and this is how you are going to go about it, right? Or, might not even be that. I got my down payment. I got my credit together. I just need to be shown the right way. All right. Well, we got a we got a month plan for you. You know what I'm saying? But it comes down to just laying out a plan and having a having a strategic plan about how we are gonna get you to where you want to go. And I think once again, what separates me. I like. You know what? I remember growing up, man. I always thought it was dope when my rappers had these monikers, right? I'm like, oh man, Jay Z, Dr. Dre, and all the good stuff. Well, I'm. I hey, listen. I might not be a rapper, but you know what I'm saying. I want to have a persona. And um, that's where the whole, whole notch of average agent came in, right? I know it's long as hell, but it is what it is. But uh, I believe I separate myself from other agents for that very reason, because I actually care. I want to see you win. I want to see you. I want to I want to be there at the beginning and not even at the end, because I ain't got an end, because after you, I sell you a house, I'm going to be at the cookout with you. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, when you're ready to sell a house or your cousin needs something, let me know. Mm -hmm. But um. My, I believe my connotations are different ones because we come with a game plan. And the game plan is, because the sound of the bottom, people don't know, real estate agents, they, they do all this work. They don't get paid to the very end. So you got to think about all the manpower, hours, time, research, all that good stuff that's being put into this to only get paid after three months worth of work. Mm, yeah. Man, but my thing is, this is not, if, if, if and this for anybody who want to be in real estate, if your heart is in it, don't do it. Don't do it. You'll, you'll, you'll mess around and Start losing hair early on if you, you know what I'm saying, if your heart's not in it. You know what I'm saying? Gotta have a passion, work with people. You know what I'm saying? So, so I guess to wrap it up, I always ask my guests this what's more important to you, the journey or destination? Ooh, that's a dope question. Um, for me, my journey, 
my journey has been a uh has been just that a journey uh so i don't know where this is going to take me in the end uh so it's all about the journey for me and along this journey i've met so many great people and done some great things already that out of you know what I'm saying because my story how i became a real estate agent is uh is one of, about triumph man um i got my license uh, after i got divorced right and like I said, you know what I'm saying? I'm not about to take this time and just, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, I went through the proper channels to, you know, grieve and, you know what I'm saying, get get my mind right. But during that time, I was studying. I was taking, I was getting ready for this real estate, man. And, um, man, I took this test. I took the test. Ooh, I don't tell you how many times. I, I took the test four times, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get on the first try. Everybody played off like, oh, I, I, I passed on the first try. I did not. <laughs> So I had so much stuff going on. But um, when I did pass it, I passed it with the mindset, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing going to hold me down. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing going to hold me back. And um, when, when it happened, it happened. And, um, and I said all to say, like, the journey along the way just showed me, you know what I'm saying? No matter, you know what I'm saying? Stuff might come away, but ain't gonna, it, ain't, it ain't going to stop me, you know? And I want that whole mindset when it come down to people trying to get a home. Same thing. Like, yeah, you might have some pitfalls, but it ain't going to stop you. So right. yeah, this is a journey for me, bro. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. So how can people follow you on Instagram or Facebook or in, and connect with you? Maybe you can be a real estate agent to them. So yeah, just let the people know your information. Uh, so hey, if you guys ever want to reach on reach me, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram's all not your average agent. And average is abbreviated AVG, not the whole thing spelled out because that'd be too long. But it's uh it's all one word, not your average agent. Uh, if you guys even want to text me or call me, my number is 216-450-4048. If you just want to pick my brain, just ask me a question. I'm available. Um, you know, plainer than that. Yeah, and I want to say shout out to the um, the, the Pull Up Experience podcast. Y'all oh. like what y'all doing over there, man. I just watched that episode with Cam that y'all had on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cam, Cam, Cam is dope, man. I love Cam, That's man. my guy right there, man. I did a, my... I want to say my first or second podcast with Cam. Mm, no, nah, listen, bro. And uh, we, 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 we'll we be a whole nother episode but talk about podcasts. But you want to talk about the hack, the networking hack? That podcasting, where is that, bro? Like, I, I, I literally tell everybody, to get you a podcast. Right. So many dope people, and I learned so much. Just like how, how we mean you talking. I yeah, promise you. I like, yeah, I so- don't know you. <laughs> like- right, 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 right. right, right. <laughs> No, listen, it's and it's like it's like you 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 can you kind of tailor your own school for real for real. Cause the question I ask someone on the podcast, the question I want to know, you know what I'm saying? So Same I'm learning. Me. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. So, so listen, it's it's a whole hack in itself, man. But yeah, no, we're doing like you know what I'm saying, like in my city, uh Cle- oh you you from Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? Cleveland is a lot of competition, bro. And why we trying to eliminate that, we're trying to bring people together. So right. You know, in New York, they got Earn Leisure. Atlanta, they got my man, David Shans. California got, you know what I'm saying, Todd B in there. Shout out to Todd B in there. Because he's the one who even got me even thinking about podcasting. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm trying I'm trying to do it here in Cleveland, you know? Right. So why not? You yeah, know? why not? That's that's what I tell myself with anything. Why not? Why can't I do it? I didn't overcame so much. Shit, I've been st- I was staying over Steve's. I never thought I'd leave Cleveland. Mm-hmm. So I hope Steve's living. So, yeah, I... Why not? <laughs> right. So listen. Yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, I appreciate you, bro, though. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, you know what I'm saying? I, I know uh, a lot of times people, you know what I'm saying? They get not saying timid, but they, you know what I'm saying? They they don't like ask them like I ask everybody. And if you tell me no, that's fine. But I appreciate you reaching out, man. I appreciate you be, being in your no podcast, doubt. man. I appreciate you for even responding. Cause like I said, like I'm a stranger to you. You a stranger to me, but you still well, we know uh similar people, you know yeah. what I'm saying? People friends, but I appreciate you for even responding because some people don't respond. Like they might look at your followers like I'm I'm building this page up. And uh-huh. I can say like I got like maybe 600 followers, 500 something followers, but it's like I'm building it up. I ain't worrying about that because I know like yeah. I, I, I posted some Rick Ross said he said it takes 10 years to build up a brand. So hopefully people, you know, gravitate towards my podcast and your podcast and like building the brand up like and you got to rep yourself. You got to brand yourself. That's why I got the Float for Life sweatshirt on. That's dope, by the way. That's dope, by the way. Yeah. And 
like, I don't know if y'all do that as well, but I think it's like beneficial, like just to be out and rock the pull up experience brand or something like that. And people, man, people going to ask you like, what brand is that? Like, what is that? And you're like, oh, this is the pull up experience podcast. Check us out on Instagram, YouTube. Like people think that it don't make a difference, but people going to ask those questions. Right. No, listen, bro. It's funny you said because we, we we work on that right now as you speak because we like we got we gotta do something it's like you know earn leisure got uh assets over uh liabilities, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we gotta do something. So we got we got something that works though, but yeah, that, that's facts though. Because you don't catch me watching what rocking out Gucci and then like that. I rock my own brand, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't wear that. Right, 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 right. No, it's not that's even fact. not even that I can't afford it, it's like I can't afford it mentally. Exactly, like, there you go. There you go, bro. No, that's facts. You know what I'm saying? So no, I appreciate you, man. Like I said, hey, and like and like my thing is like everyone like, oh, you got a big follow. I don't care about none of that. that that's a, that's irrelevant to me. You know what I'm saying? I just think I think I thank God for it, but at the end of the day, that, that you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care if you got five followers or 15 million followers, because you're humans like I am, you know what I'm saying? And the time it takes for me to talk to you, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 basic human courtesy, you know what I'm saying? I get time restrictions and stuff like that, but at the same time, if I can learn from you, learn from each other, brother, I'm all about that. Right. All about that. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, now I know. Now we know each other now. You know what I'm saying? I, I can hit you up. I'm in Tampa. Like, hey, bro, I'm in Tampa. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Let's look at hey, the market. That's, that's what I'm with. Like, let's network with like-minded people who yeah. want to build legacies, who want to build brands, like, who want to change their whole situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't hang out with people that ain't trying to go towards the goal. Like, you know what I'm saying? They running away from it. I'm trying to run to it. Like, Ooh, you know? Yep. No, yeah, bad, man. Bro. I appreciate you for, you know, tapping in and, you know, we're going to connect in the future, the near yes, future, hopefully, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to keep it going. But thank you for coming on. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, man. And hey, shout out to y'all for, for watching, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all y'all the real ones. <laughs> Definitely, man. All right, man. Enjoy your day. Yes, sir. All right.